They try one more time. Hey, can you, anybody oh. hear us out in the uh, virtual world, in Zoom world? Yeah. Yeah, Ms. No, Dupuy yeah. or Ms. Farkas? Yep, Betsy says she just uh, chatted, said she can now, so okay. Okay, we okay. should be good to go. Thank you. All righty. No, no. <laughs> we can still start oh, without, we can, yeah, we can start. <clears throat> I called a Patton Township Board of Supervisors March 22, 2023 meeting at 532 to order. Announcements. Welcome especially new Patton Township residents to the Patton Township community, a place for all. Doug, do you have an announcement? Yeah, we had a press conference here on March 20th with Representative Scott Conklin. Uh, it was announced that Patton Township's been awarded a Commonwealth grant of $180,000. Uh, that will uh, be used to help re remediate the effects of the sinkhole that impacted uh, the 18 homes in the Georgetown townhomes on Amblewood Way. Okay, and I also would like to thank the hotels that stepped up to the plate. That was Super 8, Tolly's. Subtle Lynn, thank you, who is the general manager. Um, Jennifer West from um, the Ramada Conference Center. Um, she's the director of sales and marketing. And Joe Thomas, who's the general manager of Ramada. And to all that extended a helping hand, we say thank you all. As you are able, please. Madam Chair, oh. you just add to that announcement? Mm -hmm. uh, we in the board. Here would all like to also thank Pam Rahm for getting the ball started on this grant. She exhausted many resources locally and then was finally connected with the state rep who took it from there. So without Pam, it never would have reached Scott Conklin's office. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. But it's a team effort and I, I keep saying there's no I in team. Um, it's all of us working together to help each other so thank you all all right as you are able please rise and join the board in the pledge of allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you Next on the agenda is additions to the posted agenda. Are there any items or items that the supervisors would like to post or at this time? No. Okay, seeing none. We have the public comments. Residents, taxpayers may address the board on issues of interest to the township. Comments related to a specific agenda item should be deferred until that point in the meeting if you are attending by Zoom, please use the raise hand feature on the Zoom application and wait for the chair to indicate it is your opportunity to speak. If you are attending in person, please approach the podium and wait for the chair to indicate it is your opportunity to speak. Please be respectful and defer from using any profanity, derogatory, or any offensive language, abbreviations, or gestures during the meeting. Respect is always given by this board and expect the same in return. Are there any public, public comments are limited to five minutes per person. Are there any public comments at this time? Welcome. Hi. Your name? My name's Chelsea Maylai. You may remember me, I was yes. here last year. <laughs> So I'm just here to follow up. Okay. Um, I know y'all have sent a couple letters to our neighborhood regarding the pathways in the Gaynor Drive, the Valley Vista area. And I'm just here to see what happens after that if um, like neighbors aren't complying with those requests. Okay, Doug, do you have any information on that? Well, we'll have to file, follow up with um, Susan Wheeler who manages that part things for parks for us. So. Okay. I'm not prepared to give you a retort. Okay. Right now, so. 
Well, well, we will... While we're on the topic, I was also curious, you all had suggested doing a survey after we cleared up the area behind our home mm -hmm. on like what to do with that part of the parklet. And we never received one, so I was curious if you're I still... Know. Susan's still working on that. She's working on sending you know, it out? She's working with the Recreation Advisory Committee, and okay. that'll come out. I don't... not sure exactly. Do you know when... She was can... looking to do it in the spring after winter was over. Okay. So it should be coming short, you know, in the next okay. few months. I just want to reiterate, like, I felt very, very singled out on this, and I've lived in that neighborhood for 18 years, mm -hmm. and there's a good portion of it where the pathways have not been well-maintained or upkept or kept up. So I would just appreciate that it's followed through for other people as well. Thank I did do my part of the bargain and thank you. Definitely. Clear on our area, so thank you. We will keep you posted. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for thank your time. Thank you, and thank Thanks. you for coming. Um, thank you, Supervisor. Thanks for being the squeaky wheel. What's that? Thanks for being the squeaky wheel. I appreciate it. We all need squeaky wheels. <laughs> Any other public comment at this time? Seeing none, next on the agenda is um, presentations and public hearing. First on that agenda is the Women History Month proclamation. At May 8th, the 2022-23 Board of Supervisors meeting, the Women History Month proclamation was announced to be placed on this March 22nd, 2023 meeting agenda. This proclamation does hereby proclaim March as Women's History Month, honoring the contributions made by women and girls everywhere for their outstanding achievements and invaluable contributions to society. Can I get a motion to approve this proclamation? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor can say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? The proclamation passes. Thank you all. Um, next on the agenda is the Master Plan Amendment, Guy Singer Clinic, 2023. Doug? Yeah, as you recall, we first looked at this last month. Um, if you'd like, Leslie's here can go back through the information if you desire, but nothing's changed. Uh, we had a comment from the board did open the public hearing for public comments. We had a comment from a resident who lived on Gaynor Road. He had some concerns about uh, charges that the State College Borough Water Authority wanted him to pay to tap into their, their system. Uh, at that point, the board recessed the, the meeting or the public hearing until tonight. Uh, in, in the interim, I did some, some managering and I think I've come up with a solution uh, to the residents issue there that and I don't want to get too in front of this now I've, I've talked to Mr. Garris he was the resident who was here mm -hmm. and uh, I asked him to reach out to his, his neighbors and talk to them a little bit um, but I think we have a solution that I think is going to be a win-win maybe win-win-win for everybody in the area but I just he, uh, he emailed me today and said please thank everyone in the meeting uh, for hearing about our water situation helping us maybe find a solution that works for everyone involved. So I think we've resolved this issue and we can move forward with the project. Okay, point. great. Okay, I would like to open up the hearing to resume. Are there any comment, any other comments from the public at this time? I'm looking, giving people a few minutes. Okay, time to speak up. All right, seeing no comments, I would like to close the public hearing at this point. Are there any questions from the board regarding the Guy Singer Master Plan? See, oh, Supervisor uh, Whitman. Yes, I have several, and I'm delighted at this opportunity to. Um, make additional comments because I had a chance to look over the plans again in more detail and with questions that had been answered last time. Um, I'm uh, intrigued by the wording open space on a large part of the property. Um, and I went on the uh, Google Maps. It's wooded, that area. Um, and there's wetlands within that wooded area. So. Um, what does this open space mean? Is this in perpetuity or just for the 
you know, the next 10 years. Yep, it's a requirement of the ordinance. It is in perpetuity. Can I ask, can I first ask you oh, to yes. address? I'm sorry, <laughs> yes. No. Uh, my name is uh, Nick Argot with Borden Lawson Engineering. Thank you. I, I represent Guy Singer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I should know that. So you designated that space as a requirement of master plans. Correct. Yeah. That's for, for it, oh, in the office buffer two district. Thank you. Uh, yeah, have trying to, yeah, oh, there's, there's a mass, there's a open space requirement in there. Do you remember what it is, the percentage, Nick, off the top of your head? I, I don't. I, I think I it's 40. 40%. I think it's 40%. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, so they had they had to set aside a portion of the property, and that will be restricted from development for perpetuity. Okay. Or until the zoning changes. Great. I, I should have known that. That makes perfect sense. So I'm actually delighted in that, personally, and I think a lot of people 20, will. 20%, sorry. Oh, will really? Yeah. We'll like that. So I noticed there's the bike path going, or a path that's going to be chip covered, wood chip covered, I believe. Uh, just a question about the use of that. The public is able to go in and use that as they are interested. Uh, yes. Yeah, so there's there's an existing path on the site now, a bike path. Um, it, it doesn't make the full loop. Um, mm -hmm. It will once uh, phase five and six are constructed. Yes. Uh, but that would be uh, a public amenity. Okay. And it would be closed at dark, the same way that other parks are. Or yeah. Presumably. Okay. Um, yeah, oh, I wanted to, um, let's see, dirt, uh, oh, just a question about the dirt, the dirt bike complex, that's not on the Geisinger property, is it? Uh, no, it. nope, I'm not, and I'm not familiar with okay. where I, that I would be. That area. Was that on the, oh, that's, no, that's, that's off the property, I just wondered that's if on somebody else's that. property. That's, that's just a little aside, thanks. Um, so... I was looking at the intersection between um, <laughs> I mean, the, the entrance. It's um, Abigail Road and Geising. Um, Gracewood. 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 Thank Gracewood. you. It's going to be a stoplight there. I'm not seeing any obvious bike crossing pathway. I see a lot of um, crosswalks, zebra walks, or whatever their piano key crosses. Um, so is there going to be a bikeway uh, we, we, we can include one. Oh, like a, uh, you're thinking like a crosswalk, almost like striping across the, the driveway entrance? Right. I, I, know where the, I know where the bike path comes and it, so it, it actually crosses the, the driveway. driveway. Yeah, no, driveway. there's a, there's a marked you. crossing. Yeah. And I guess they're pedestrian and so that a bike yeah. would just walk across there. Is there no, there's a marked crossing there. I have it on mine. Uh, yeah. But it's yes, a, right. is it a zebra crossing? Yeah, well, it's diagonal striking. Okay, yeah, so it's what's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, there. Okay. It's just, okay, I'm just excited to see that finished. Yeah, That's right great. there. So it's marked. Yeah. Okay, so my, my biggest question was this, and I, I want to thank you first for considering um, a parking deck, which, you know, um, from my perspective, takes up less, there's less expanse, more building up. And I understand your reason for not doing it because you don't need that space and it's, it's expensive to do. The solution, which was to have the um, 50 off-street parking spaces, sort of, um, you have the main parking lot, or the parking lot in front of the entrance there, then you have the parking deck, and then you would have um, the off-street 50 parking spaces. So I'm driving up there, and I'm thinking of the parking decks downtown, where, um, you know, I don't want to have to drive through all the parking decks and all over Geisinger to know whether I should take this parking space at the 50, uh, 50 spots that are in the offsite Because that's farther away, whether I should, like, make the rounds for that. Is there any way to have electronic sign that indicates how many parking spaces are left? Is that really complex? Um. I'm just thinking I don't know. Patient. That's a, a good question. Okay. Um, I, I'm sure in bigger cities they, they probably have something similar to that. Um, but I, I know in, in this case, I, the majority of the parking is in the surface parking lot behind exactly. and, and the parking deck. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the, most of the traffic kind of circulates in a, a clockwise direction around the clinic, um, unless you find a parking spot and then sometimes you would go counterclockwise. The new parking lot on the the, um, the 50 parking spaces that we're adding on the, the right side of the building, 
is really going to be for uh, staff. Like, so, oh. so, so not so much for uh, That's perfect. patients. That's a great solution. And so okay. it just, could, just because it is, like okay. you said, the proximity of, of that parking lot to the clinic entrance, it's not something that you'd want to you know, do two times in within a half hour, but for staff, right. you know, who's okay. going to be there all day. That's really a nice solution. Okay. I'm just thinking myself, we're, um, the customers are facing her and uh, going up there looking for a parking space. I like to find it yep. close by. Okay. Um, perfect. I think that's it. And I apologize for all the, the lengthy comments I gave last time about the trees. I haven't read the Arborist report, but I did want to add one tree just in case for your interest. Um, there's a tree that's very um, friendly with for me having a wet foot, meaning in a wetland or in a um, the stormland management basement, and that is something called a a sweet gum, mm -hmm. and it's um, I can give you the scientific name. I'll give you the first part of it, and then you can, it's liquid ambar, just as it sounds. And the last name is kind of weird, it's flua, but if you just look up. Sweet gum. Sweet gum and liquid ambar, you get it. So it's just got a sweet suggestion gum. there. That's it. Thank okay. you so much. So, uh, yep, thank you. Any other board member have a question regarding that? All right, seeing no other questions, uh, can I get a motion to approve the Geisinger Clinic Master Plan Amendment 2023? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? The motion passes. Thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, next. Yes. I want to thank you, Doug, for uh, getting, doing some behind the scenes work yeah. and um, we got to start. We got a ways to go to finish. We got to start. But it's good to hear when, again, government's working and, you know, we when I hear yes, 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 that makes me feel good. And so hopefully we can get something figured out. Thanks to that resident who came out last meeting too to advocate. And thank you. I have to piggyback on that, though. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is the Long Range Transportation Plan, the CCMPO, the Center County Metropolitan Planning Organization. Um, welcome, Jim Sayer, Sayer, from the Principal Transportation Planner for the Center Region Planning Agency. Hello, Jim. How are you, sir? Very good. How are you? Good. <laughs> All right, so thank you for having me tonight. Um, I appreciate the chance to talk to you about two plan updates that we're working on. Thank you. If you're not familiar, um, again, I'm the principal transportation planner over at the Center County uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization. If you're not familiar with an MPO, uh, Anywhere that you have an urbanized area with a population of over 50,000 people, like State College, you have to designate what's called a Metropolitan Planning Organization, or MPO, to deliver the Federal Metropolitan Transportation Planning Program. That comes down to a list of about uh, eight federally required plans that have to be kept updated in accordance with current standards. But the other thing that it really is, is a working group that brings together local officials so for uh, Patton Township, it includes Alex and Elliot Abrams as our committee members to represent you. And it also includes state and federal highway officials. And the main purpose of this group is to talk about the, the federal highway dollars that come into Center County, how they're going to be spent, what our priorities are, and how to move through the difficulties and issues that come up with the projects that result. Um, Again, there's about a eight federally required plans. Maybe the, the showpiece of that is the TIP, or Transportation Improvement Plan. That's a list of every project that we're going to spend federal dollars on in the next four years. It's kind of our to-do list. You know, it's exactly what we're doing. The other big plan would be the Long Range Transportation Plan, and that's more of a strategic piece. It's walking through the reasoning of why we're doing those things, how those projects are selected, and what the impacts of them will be on the transportation network. Uh, we do occasionally get the chance to step beyond those required plans. So if you'll, thank you. 
Um, we were recently awarded funding from PennDOT to work on an active transportation plan. So this is going to build on the 2015 bicycle plan. Um, some of the major differences are that it'll go from just covering the center region to being a county-wide plan. We've seen a lot of successes in the last decade or so in terms of building bicycle and pedestrian facilities. We'd like to grow that beyond the center region and see if we can replicate some of that success. What we're also finding in uh, some of the early outreach is that there are a range of issues in the outlying areas that are quite different from what we see in the center region and they're going to require different strategies to deal with them. Um, we're hoping to wrap this plan up so that it's ready to support our application to renew the bicycle friendly community designation for the center region in fall of 2024. If you did, Vince, thank you. Um, the other thing that will be a step forward with this plan is that it's going to consider more modes than just bicycles. So we'll spend more time looking at the at pedestrian and walking uses. We'll spend time looking at the connection to the, the transit portion of the network. And we'll also spend a little bit of time talking about personal mobility devices. These are something that have come on a, into much wider usage in the last decade, things like e-bikes, scooters, powered skateboards, um, and obviously the regulatory framework hasn't kept up with the use of these vehicles, but we are seeing some early adoption and we hope to be able to, uh, you know, to capture what some of the trends are for usage and provide some guidance for the, the center county municipalities and how to assess and how to plan for these going forward. Our other update coming right in the heels of that will be to the long range transportation plan. Again, this is one of the big plans for the MPO. Um, it's our strategic piece. It has to cover a 20 year time horizon. It has to assess the, the funding resources that will be available for maintaining the transportation network over that time period. It has to assess how the network is performing. Um, it gives us the opportunity to select major projects and then make projections about what impacts they'll have on the operations of that system. Step forward, thank you. Uh, some of the things that we're hoping to focus on in this update are, of course, updating the demographics. We're also hoping to bring more data into the process. As we go along, each time we do one of these updates, there's more and more condition information, there's more and more information about congestion, about safety, and we're hoping to bring this into the early stages of the outreach for the Long Range Transportation Plan and give people a chance to, to look at the data, to review it, to make sure they're seeing the same things that we are, and uh, give them a chance to evaluate the steps that we're recommending as a result of that. One of the innovations in the last long range transportation plan, one of the things that we did differently was we took on the effort to reach out to uh, all 35 of the municipalities in Center County. And it actually ended up being a uh, series of 48 workshops that were conducted across the county. It involved up to three members of the Center County MPO staff and then a varying number of people from the local side depending on the the size and structure of the municipality that we were working with. And actually, Leslie was working for Center County at the time and was one of the architects of this process. And, um, you know, one of the reasons that we had the, the depth of information that, that came out of that. Through that process, over 900 issues were identified. They were related to about 25 program projects. They identified over 100 additional candidate projects and another 100 additional issues that could become projects with further analysis. Um, one of the things that we identify when we start on this update is that the number of issues and the expense of addressing those is far beyond the resources that we could expect to have over the next 20 years, but it gives us a chance to know what we're dealing with and what's out there. So for this time around, we are looking to touch on that round of engagement. We are in the process of reaching out to all 35 municipalities again. This meeting is part of that, but we are not going quite as in deep. We are not 
spending as much time. Um, that outreach in the last round started with a guided discussion that, that talked about not only key corridors, freight issues, safety issues, drainage issues, but also got into some of the operations issues of the municipality, getting them talking about how they uh, worked with each other or with other agencies, but looking for issues beyond just uh, the normal consideration of projects. And while it's tremendously valuable to have that background and to understand what the, the landscape is that we're dealing with, one of the things that we're finding with, finding as we go out and we refresh this data is that we took in more information than we can handle. That in four years, for instance, with the, uh, with the session that we held here in Patton Township, all of the people on the MPO side have changed over since then. Many of the people on the uh, uh, Patton Township side have changed over. And I think we identified that actually Doug was the only person to be in both sessions, and we just kind of squeaked that one in by a few weeks. <laughs> so um, one of the lessons that we're learning from this is that um, it's not, although it's good to have that depth of information, it's also important to be out and refreshing it on a regular basis. So this falls in with other efforts at the MPO where we're trying to have this conversation more regularly and the timetable that we're establishing is, you know, what we hope to establish is a two-year cycle for going out and refreshing this conversation rather than waiting four years and trying to cover the whole thing in one bite. Um, and I think also going into this, there are some things that we can improve on in terms of the data that we're feeding into it. We can provide more information, again, about uh, asset condition data, about congestion, about some of the program projects. And as we go through these future rounds, we will learn from that and improve what we're bringing in. Um, for Patton Township, we were able to sit down with staff. And I just wanted to take a couple of minutes tonight and summarize some of the key concerns that they raised with us and give you the chance to comment on that. Um, probably the headline issue that was raised were the Toft Trees Avenues improvements that that for the uh, potential impact that it has on the township should be considered a major project. And then also with staff, we identified some operations issues with the signals maybe not something that would require a, a reconstruction of the signal, but something that's uh, more easily addressed by looking at the detection hardware and the programming and looking at the way it's actually operating and maybe driving the need to coordinate with other municipalities for some of the systems that extend across uh, township lines. Um, with those two higher level concerns, we also had a question in the long range transportation plan, there's an emphasis on fiscal constraint. They don't want you to program a project unless you can show you expect to have the resources to construct it. They do allow you to include a list of exemplary projects, kind of a, a, a list of priorities that you know you can't fund, but you'd like to get to should the funding come available. And one of the projects we had listed for that in Patton Township was the airport connector which if you're not familiar with that, it's a connection from the Fox Hollow Road area over to Interstate 99. And the way we had it displayed in the last long range plan was that it would connect at the interchange serving Innovation Park. And I just wanted to make sure that we were checking in with the board and getting you to affirm or correct if that should be a continuing priority. Or note any questions you may have. You had that as well, thank you. So that's, um, that's kind of the, the quick run through it, and I wanted to leave you with a few moments to respond, either in terms of, of confirming those priorities, redirecting them, or letting us know how you feel about the connector. Thank you. Um, are there any supervisor that may have? Supervisor Whitman? Oh, he, I have go first. Supervisor Trevino. Yeah. Okay. Let's <laughs> uh, go I'll second the airport. Uh, road connector. Mm. I served one year on the uh, airport authority, uh, fil finishing a term of, of a supervisor who had resigned before his term expired. 
now our representative on that authority is uh, George Downsboro. And the, what, what I learned from that one year is uh, the airport authority certainly is looking long range. Uh, there, until the pandemic hit, there was a steady growth in uh, passengers boarding and depart, uh, dis deboarding. Uh, new airline routes were coming in. We got a, a new airline temporarily, Allegiant, for a little while, but the pandem pandemic obviously kind of messed with that, their plans. So it, I think uh, the, what's the word? The future growth prospects of our airport uh, really imply that we need to have a better connector from I-99 yeah. than a two-lane, what's basically a <laughs> what used to be a farm road, mm -hmm. you might say, uh, is now a major thoroughfare for traffic to and from the airport, and it. It's still a small two-lane road with a steep right-hand or left-hand curve, depending on which direction you're going, uh, at the top trees, uh, uh, mm -hmm. near the top trees, uh, Cripplewood Road entrance. Uh, it definitely needs to, to, I would say, to remain in our vision as a long-term uh, prospect, and hopefully uh, sooner rather than later there might be some federal transportation funds or something that we could apply for a major grant to uh, support construction of such a connector. Mm -hmm. Supervisor Whitman? Sure, I'd like to second everything that um, Dan Trevino just said. And also, there at one time there was talk about a bicycle trail, so or a, um, uh, with, what are they called when it's an all? Multi-use trail. Multi-use multi -use trail. <laughs> So would that be alongside of the connector, or would that be separate from that? Do you know of As I would like to see that. I don't know the programming you even got that far. Okay. I mean, that's an option that would be included if you wanted. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to add that to that. And I actually have a question about um, a slide. It was like three, three slides back. It was titled, The Basics of the Long Range Transportation Planning. And you, a number of um, objectives that the MPO tries to get, and it's oh, I'm gonna get my. Is this the wrong slide? So it was one where you listed um, oh, list, uh, listing stakeholders. That's it, basics. Yeah, and now I just have to get it down here so I can actually read it because I can't. Well, that's right. I guess I can read from it. So. Um, those are great um, um, shoot I'm, I apologize I just can't read that here I'll share it so everyone can see it. oh yeah thanks if you could do that on the thank you Alex it's awesome you know exactly what I need thank you yeah that's why I have this in front of me yeah so the, <laughs> the data collection um, and the basics of that so the um, the real obvious ones you obviously want the population the demographics and the um, the GIS, the bridge evaluation and crash data. I love the fact that you inc now include the stakeholder input, which I'm assuming is the outcome of, or the result of the program that Leslie started. It's actually when I was first supervisor and I was so impressed with that program. I went up and introduced myself to her. It's just a great idea. So the last one is equity. And I'm assuming that is something that also is a part of that stakeholder input. I'm, I want to thank you for including that, but sometimes it's easy to state what you want to do and it's hard to find a way to make that happen. So I'm assuming by equity you mean really being able to reach stakeholders of all levels, of all geographic locations. Some are much, um, some people are um, more able to come to those meetings or uh, you know, are close to those meetings and work hours that allows them. So I'm just curious what kind of measures do you put into this process of getting stakeholder input that would allow for equity 
um, commu uh, populations that are say, far afield from the meeting place or um, populations that may be working on shifts and might not be able to come at that particular designated time. So there will be a couple parts of that. Um, equity is considered one of our other processes, other plans, the public participation plan. Yep. So that that kind of lays out the groundwork for how you do the outreach with the long range Absolutely. transportation yeah. plan. And we just completed that update over the last couple of months. But one of the things that we're talking about is, okay, in addition to having meetings like this, are you making the meeting available online? Can it be viewed after the fact? Can they review it and then provide comment? Okay. Um, one of the things that we're talking about as innovation is a strong word, but an evolution of what we've been doing before is providing, again, when we talk about sharing that data and the the needs or issues that were identified through this process, through other processes in previous rounds, is making that available over a digital format so that people on their own time, mm -hmm. in their own area of comfort, can view that and evaluate what the impact is to them and provide feedback on it. Again, it, what I talked about earlier is giving people the chance to see the same data and either confirm or correct the conclusions and the actions that we propose as a basis of that. Mm -hmm. um, there are options for taking that a few steps further. Those are the basics that we're building into the plan to start with. Um, as part of the process, we'll have to do a benefits and burdens analysis where we evaluate uh, based on the demographics information that we have for the county, evaluating it, are these resources being distributed in an equitable fashion? Are there any areas or any populations that are suffering a disproportionate impact as a result of the ways that these are being, that we're planning to spend these resources? So there is a process for evaluating that built into these major updates, the TIP and mm -hmm. the long range transportation plan. Um, we work from methodologies that are, that were developed uh, between PennDOT and several of the other planning partners. They've evolved visualization methods or summation methods that they feel make this easy for people to apprehend and uh, easy to share. So again, it's not just our evaluation of it, but it gives people a chance to check our work and provide comments on that through the comment process while there's still a chance to influence the plan before it's finalized and adopted. I, I just want to emphasize how, how, well, for myself how much I appreciate that effort and the impact that I know it will have on people who are, are sometimes left out. And I'm specifically thinking of the bridge in, in Center County that was troubled um, or closed for a number of years. And it, and it served a very small number of people, right? And yet it, it made all the difference in the world to their lives of having to make a circuitous route and say nothing about the, then the impact on gas, gasoline usage and the impact on climate change and so on. So I really apl applaud any efforts and I, I do recognize how difficult it is, um, but it sounds like you're paying way more than lip service to that, so thank you for that. Thank you. Um, any other supervisors? Supervisors? No comment? Okay. Thank you. And a special thank you to Leslie Young for her help as well. Um, next on the agenda, uh, Ms. Public Safety, there are no items. Public Work Operations, there is no items. And next is Engineering, Planning, and Zoning. Um, Planning Commission report. Welcome, Ellen Foreman, for Planning Commission member, who will give us a report on activities. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Uh, well, there's not a lot to report. We had a pretty short meeting. Um, we had a representative from Keller Engineers who was there to answer questions about Grays Woods Brynwood Phase 4A land development plan slash mass grading. 
that was submitted. The plan basically described cut material from the construction of Gray's Point Phase 7A and how it would be distributed to the Brynwood Phase 4A parcel for mass grading. Do I have that right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, also incorporated into the plan was stormwater erosion and sedimentation control measures that would be installed prior to any major site work. Um, no other site improvements are proposed on Brenwood Phase 4A um, at this time, although rough grading does reflect the future geometry of road alignment, stormwater, and residential building lots. Um, the staff recommended that the Planning Commission uh, conditionally approve Brynwood Phase 4A Mass Grading Land Development Plan with the understanding that staff comments would be completed by the developer. Um, we had some questions. A Keller representative said that the trees had already been removed from those 19 acres and that they plan to plant meadow grass and leave it that way until the area is further developed. Um, the township staff said that there had been no comments from the residents regarding the plan development. Um, Doug said the residents were notified by signage that had been posted on the site. Um, so given that this is part of the plan community and there was no input from residents and staff, you know, basically said they were confident that the, um, imp the final uh, comments would be acted upon, the commission voted to recommend conditional approval of the plan. Is there anything? That was any, it. Any questions from the board? Lovely. Do you have any other thing, anything else you might want to add? If not, <laughs> That's fine. Come on up then. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it, it is. It's slightly So you did a perfect job. So I'm going I'm to add a couple of things. So if you remember back in the fall, you approved Grace Point 7A. It was a 36 housing unit. It's the film or the cut material that they're excavating to build that. Um, land development plan as presented, they need a place to distribute the soil. So they're choosing to do it on this Brynwood Phase 4A. So the Brynwood, do you have the, the document? Um, the Brynwood Phase 4A, it's approximately 20 acres. And if you include the previous plan from the, um, the Grays Point 7A, it comes to 88.36 acres of disturbance in total. There is really no other improvements that are made on the site. Um, as was already stated, they are going to do improvements prior to any major site disturbance to ensure that stormwater erosion and sedimentation control measures are all installed and there's no issues with runoff from the site. So if you look in your agenda packet, you have a location map. The um, staff review comments are included as well as comments from the other agencies that review the plans and the plan set. And as was already mentioned to you, the Planning Commission did con conditionally approve the plan. Um, Michael Pratt from Keller Engineering is here this evening. If you have any additional questions. Does any board member have any additional questions? Well, I've got a comment. Um, Supervisor McGruder. I have some subsidence around my home in the area, so you can dump some, some of the dirt over there. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. <laughs> supervisor McCruder. <laughs> um, any other supervisor have any other questions? If not, um, I would like to make cool. a motion to approve um, the plan with the conditional um, yep. planning sure. commission with conditional approval. So second. Second that. All right. Discussion. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you both. All right. Next on the agenda is the contract award from patent crossing road improvement and retaining wall construction. 
Alex. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, in October 2020, Patton Township entered a public-private partnership with 15, 1752 North Atherton Associates, the developers of Patton Crossing. Together we applied to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for a grant to assist with funding for roadway improvements and entrance features. In 2021, the township was awarded $1.5 million multimodal transportation fund for this project. Our cooperation agreement with the project developers provides that they will fund all project costs in excess of the grant amount, provide local match where required, and cover all township expenses related to the administration of the grant. The developers engineers prepared the required plans and contract documents to proceed with construction. Bids were solicited and reviewed for two portions of the work. Uh, the first one on this memo is for the roadway improvements where there was a 0% match. Uh, my memo dated on March 17th of 2023 shows that Emeron Construction bid on the project approximately $1.15 million and Leno Hallbaker at approximately $1.32 million. The project estimate for this project, what, the cost estimate for this project was about $1.2 million. Therefore, I recommend selecting Amaron Construction of State College to proceed with this portion of the project. Uh, the cast in place retaining wall uh, was also put out to bid. There's a 30% match from the developer required on that project. Um, on my memo dated March 17th, uh, Glen O. Hallbaker bid on the project approximately $2.18 million. Leonard S. Fiore bid, bid $2.18 Three six million. However, the project estimate was only eight hundred and thirty-eight thousand. Therefore, I rec recommend rejecting all of these bids. So, in summary, um, I would ask for the board of supervisors to make a motion to award the roadway improvements contract to Amaron Construction of State College for one million one hundred and fifty thousand sixty-two dollars and fifty cents and rejecting all bids for the retaining wall as they both greatly exceed the project estimate. So moved. Second. 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 Discussion? Yep, I have a question. Okay, Supervisor Whitman. So, what accounts for this vast difference between your estimate and the bids that came in? It wasn't our estimate. It was the, the cost the estimate. developer's contractor, developer's engineer's estimate. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what accounts for that vast difference? Tony? Oh, Any ideas, Tony? All right. <laughs> All right, under the search, not at the bright lights. So I'm Tony Fructo. I'm with Pantera Engineering. We represent the, uh, the owners, developers of the property, the partners in the, in the grant request. Um, and I think that there was just a um, uh, lack of understanding of the complexity of the wall um, and what it's going to take. Yes, they did a very similar wall on the other side but kind of expanding the scope and the size of the wall. Um, there was also kind of a step up even in the last couple of years since the, and when I say the wall, I'm talking about the phase one wall, the one that was built on the other side. The round all these. The round all, yeah. thanks Doug, yeah. And this one, they want it to, they want it to be the same. They want it to look the same. Um, and just the cost of materials, just underestimating the cost of materials and uh, what it's gonna take to get it done. I mean, uh, we did reach out to some of the contractors, so it wasn't off the top of our heads. We did do our homework on this, and we were a little bit surprised by what the numbers came back, and <laughs> yeah. we need to we need to kind of revisit the scope a little bit. Yeah. So there's there's 350,000 left in the in the grant, so I'm sure at some point they'll figure out something they can spend it on and be back for another approval. So. Yes. Whether it's part of the wall or something else. Because we obviously have to have it eventually. Yes. Well, ultimately, the developer is responsible for providing it. So okay. we're, not, we're not on the hook in any means. Okay. Gotcha. But we just want to make sure they spend all the grant money. Yes. Okay. And, the wall, yeah, that's, and the wall will get built in okay. some fashion. Yes. Great. Thanks. Okay. Now, we're talking about our wall, not the big wall. Just for people who may be watching. <laughs> Any other comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Any abstentions? The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Next on the agenda is the proposed franchise agreement for Shenandoah Cable te Television. Doug? Yeah, thank you. Um, back in October of last year and in January, I provided a couple updates to the board uh, regarding uh, interest from Shenandoah Cable Television. Uh, they are doing business as uh, Shentel Cable. Uh, they are typically a second provider who comes into markets and, and, and follows the primary provider and provides uh, a competing service. Uh, their business model is that they will, they will provide uh, fiber optic cable to your home with the possibility to give you much higher speeds and mm -hmm. things like that. So they have been uh, negotiating with several of the municipalities. Uh, I think uh, last year, late last year, they, uh, uh, there was a franchise agreement approved with State College Borough. Ferguson Township, I think, actually just finished theirs in the last month or so. Uh, and currently, I think, or Harris Township just did one, uh, finished theirs uh, quite recently also. The franchise agreement that everybody has reviewed and looked at is, is based very closely on the franchise agreement we have existing with Comcast. Uh, they did include uh, CNET, uh, Cindy Hahn from CNET, the CNET executive director was part of those discussions and as he noted, has noted there is a, uh, a grant that comes from Shenandoah Cable, Chantel, uh to CNET to help provide for their op, uh, equipment things. Uh, similar, eventually it will be very similar to um, It'll be based on a percentage of revenues yeah. like it is, like Comcast is. Uh, I'll just run through the bullet points here on page seven. Um, just a real summary, a brief summary of the franchise without getting into the details too far. far. But as we have with Comcast, there's a 5% franchise fee. Uh, that's calculated on cable operators' gross revenues. Uh, that comes to the township, and that's a seen as a payment to the township for the use of our right-of-ways by their cable TV friend, their cable TV uh, equipment and, 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 and wires and lines and other facilities. Um, there is a, uh, a long list of customer service standards. Uh, that includes a telephone answering time limit, time limits for commencing installation, uh, et cetera, provides for a four-hour appointment window for service calls, uh, several notices that have to be provided to subscribers, uh, requirements that bills be clear, concise, and fully itemized, uh, a detailed customer cons complaint procedure, so if somebody feels they're not being uh, treated by Chantel correctly, they can come to us and we can look at the franchise agreement and, and, and talk to Chantel and say, you know, have you, have you done all these steps that you said you were going to step to do through? There's a, uh, Chantel may not impose late fees on a subscriber who disputes a bill in good faith until the investigation is completed. Uh, requirements to be met prior to disconnecting credits for service hopper interruptions of six hours and more and standards of subscriber privacy. Again, these are all uh, based very closely on what we do at Comcast. Uh, one of the main reasons we have these franchise agreements is to make sure that our right-of-way is protected. Uh, Chantel breaks anything else in our right-of-way, they have to fix it, mm -hmm. um, just as we do for anybody else, any other uh, utility that uh, occupies our right-of-way. Uh, there are some reporting requirements that, that are required from Chantel. Uh, again, I, on page 8, uh, uh, Chantel again provide capital funding to CNET. Won't go into any more detail there. Um, as, as Comcast does, Chantel's agreed to provide basic level television service to public buildings. That includes our building here, their shop upstairs, and uh, there's several others listed in the agreement. Uh, the term of the agreement is 10 years. Um, there is a build-out provision in the in the agreement. Obviously, for the first 10 years, they're not going to they're not going to build out, and there's a caveat in there. But I would say for, I'll leave this note, for those of you who are around in 10 years and be renegotiating this, uh, this uh, franchise agreement, uh, they need to look at the build-out provisions and at least probably start putting some requirement for Chantel 
to uh, to strive for for the next for the next uh, uh, next ten years. Uh, Shentel is uh, they have a lot of work to do before they can provide service. It'll probably be at least I, I, I saw it somewhere I think it was in Ferguson Township. They said they were going to start construction in 2024. You know, probably be you know several months to a year after that before they're able to provide uh, service to anybody. But uh, stay tuned, it'll come. And with that, I'd ask if the board has any questions. And the recommended uh, action is if the board finds the draft agreement satisfactory, we should schedule uh, formal approval by ordinance at the, either the April 12th or April 26th meeting. Okay, and are there any supervisors that had questions at this time? Yeah, I do, Madam Super Chair. Supervisor Torino? Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, this process is very different from the process that we use to uh, develop the Com Comcast. That process with Comcast was the municipalities had a working group. Yeah. This process, they're going to the municipalities individually. Yeah. So why why is that? Why is there a different process for this what, this uh, provider than the than Comcast? Uh, my assumption was we were going to follow that prior process, um, but after the borough agree, uh, borough approved theirs, uh, Chantel just has, has moved forward talking to each municipality, and people have been approving it. So if the municipalities want to have a different process, then now is the time to tell Chantel yeah, that. It's a little too late now, but, uh, okay, so, I don't, I don't disagree, I'm not, I'm not arguing yeah. that we should go back to the old, old form, I'm just trying to understand <laughs> why, why it happened this way. Second question is, you had recommended when this first came up that we use the, the Cohen Law Group. Uh, well, the Cohen Law Group pr proposed to the municipalities that they would represent us at no cost to us. So my question is, okay, some, some municipalities did uh, contract, if that's the right word, with the Cohen Law Group, and some didn't. Uh, so what did they do for us since we we did utilize the Columbia. They prepared the documents. They met with us and with Chantel. Uh, they reviewed the documents with the managers. We went through those, um, you know, a few concerns that were noted. Uh, and then they prepared the ordinance and the other documentation that would be. All the municipalities who passed it so far, at least in the center region, have, have used Cohen's services. All right, I'm just curious. That's it. Any other supervisor with questions? Supervisor Whitman? Yeah, just. Doug? They, why did they provide, why did this law firm provide the services for free? Are they working for Chantel? Well, they're working for us, but Chantel's paying them. Um, hmm. They are, they are our attorney. Yep. For Chantel, it's easier for Chantel to, um, let's say, make the, process easier for all the municipalities. That's okay. So uh, Cohen Far uh, Law Group is by far the premier law group or law group in Pennsylvania who deals with cable TV cool. franchises. Okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions at this time? Yeah. So you had said for thank you. You had said for Comcast there was a, a joint uh, sort of like partnership or something like that among the municipalities. Yeah, there's there's a group called the Center Able, Center Area Cable Consortium that you were part of, Dan, or George was, or I was. I came on after the franchise franchise was already yeah. agreed to, so I didn't have to do anything. Amy Farkas was actually the the lead yeah. municipal representative. And and so I'm curious about the. Um, benefits of being in such a consortium or whatever like when we think about like rates and stuff or is it similar amongst no others? we have no control over rates so so this is regulated by federal law 
So Federal Communications Commission has a set of regulations that apply to cable TV providers. They're not viewed as utilities. Um, they're cable TV providers. Um, so utilities like telephone um, and gas, and there's some other things, uh, electric, uh, they're regulated at the state level by the Pennsylvania Utility Commission. Those people that have utility classification by the state have a right to use our right-of-ways. So we can't tell the electric company they can't use our right-of-way. They have a right to be there. Cable TV, cable TV operators do not have that right. They're not a utility. They're a cable TV provider. Regulated by a different set of regulations, like I said, by the Federal Communications Commission. So, when cable TV came on the scene back in the 70s, um, the framework that was worked out was that local municipalities who own the right-of-ways, in some cases states who own right-of-ways, uh, would negotiate these agreements with the cable TV providers to, for the TV provider to pay a fee to use the right-of-way, that, that franchise fee the five percent um, so in essence the users of the of the cable TV service they get charged five percent passes through the cable TV and comes to us um, so really all we can do is a few things we can't we, we have nothing to do with rates we have nothing to do with programming those issues are solely in the hands of the cable TV provider uh, the things that we can work with them on is like I said what they're going to uh, provide us in terms of fees some customer service issues um, standards that we talked about um, and we you know can provide, make sure that they providing a clean signal and things like that some there's some technical things that usually aren't are a problem and then usually what becomes the other big issue in cable TV is is what's called build out um, expansion you know, yeah, you know, how far does, how, who all do they have to serve? At what part is it, is somebody too remote that it's not, that they don't have to provide service to? Um, you know, in terms of, in, in Patton Township, Comcast provides service to almost everybody. There are literally only about 20 homes in Patton Township who don't have access to cable TV. So having access and having, well, also, Access to cable TV also includes access to broadband, but we don't regulate broadband under this either. We're only, only, only talking about cable TV. Broadband is like the Wild West. <coughs> Hardly any regulations on it. Um, much, much denser conversation. So we're only talking about cable TV. So everybody, almost everybody in Pat Township has, there's a, there's a coaxial cable hanging on a wire pole in front of their house almost every or buried in front of their house for both folks of us who live in newer subdivisions um, except for a few like I said about 20 homes and they tend to be up on the ridge um, you know and towards the, the western end of the township there so um, so and that's why I made the point about you know Chantel's build out you know first well they'll come in for the first 10 years and they're going to they're going to put their, you know, quote unquote, what we call plant, their wires and their, their fiber optic. They're going to put it in the densest neighborhoods they can, so they can get as, you know, the, um, you know, get as many customers as they can for the shortest run of wire that they can, um, you know, to build up their their service ship. Cable TV is a failing industry anyhow. So if you go back and look at cable TV's subscriber numbers every year for about the last 15 years, they just keep getting smaller and smaller because there's more options out there. But, you know, a lot of us, you know, I'd still pay too much for cable <laughs> TV every month. <laughs> but I like to be entertained. So um, I have, you know, I have cable TV and then I have more than one streaming service that I pay for. Let me just leave it at that. So, um, so I, you know, ultimately what it ends up being and usually where a lot of the rub is, you know, we want you to expand to get almost everybody in the township, and that's, that's usually where a lot of the discussion comes from. 
uh, that probably won't happen for at least 10 years here and maybe 20 years out. So, see town, we're going to leave it in your hands. Okay. Well, I'll still be here. So, what if it doesn't work out? What's they that? they put up all their stuff and it doesn't work out. People aren't buying, using their service. Do they just pull it down? Um, they have that option. I mean, there's a clause in the in the franchise agreement that says they got to pull all their wire out of the ground and all that stuff, fix everything up. No, I think they're pretty committed. They're uh, they provide. They're in a lot of markets in Maryland and Virginia, uh, Shenandoah, um, and, and like I said, they're almost always the second provider in, in these markets. So they they've got a business plan that they like that seems to work for them. So. I mean, you know, go Google Chantel and you'll come up with oh, I've been Googling. And so to the last point, if, and I looked at the um, establishing a set of comprehensive, quantifiable, and enforceable customer service standards, would we know about those complaints? If we want to. Um, yeah, I, I will, you know, and I, I will say I haven't heard any complaints about Comcast lately. I don't know why. Um, you know, five, ten years ago, I'd get, probably once a month, I'd get a complaint from somebody. Um, what Comcast had is they have a, they had a local government liaison that, you know, that I had a direct number to. So, you know, likely when I got complaints, they said, you know, I've been trying to work with Comcast. They're not working with me very well. Um, you know, and I'd listen to them, and if it sounded like a really legitimate complaint, then I'd contact the local government liaison with Comcast, and, and he was pretty good, and he'd usually get things resolved. Um, so one of their, their yeah, there, there's an item in the, <laughs> in the franchise agreement where I said, I want a local government liaison for Chantel, too, so we have somebody we can, we can talk to, because it, 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 it works. It works pretty well for what we need. What we need it for. We don't don't need an often, but we need somebody who can navigate um, a large company when need be. Cool. Great. Thank you. Okay. So I need the board to at least, by consensus, give me some direction on moving forward with this. With the Looks board's pleasure. Yes. Let's move forward and mm -hmm. schedule a. Uh, Approval of ordinance uh, for review on April 12th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Super, super it works. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Doug. Um, next on the agenda is the pending board works task. Doug, you're on again. Yeah, I think we just skipped to page nine on the agenda. Um, everybody did complete the survey um, and you can see the uh, the order that uh, the items came in uh, the top two are regulating special events on public property and open space preservation options uh, the next two were uh, pretty close to those uh, dissolvement of a couple of authorities that we have that are uh, don't really do anything and have some assets we can repurpose and uh, stargazing permits for individuals. And then the last one was the home occupations came in uh, clearly at number five. So if the board's satisfied with that order of that list, we'll, we'll move forward. I don't know if we'll make a lot of progress on any of these before Amy uh, starts in May, but uh, I'll take a look at them. Okay. If the board wants to reorder them, now's the time to have that discussion. Any reordering from the board? Supervisor Whitman. Um, not so much a reordering as maybe a, uh, reconsidering another project. And I was going to bring it up with you before meeting, but this is a good time to do it. Uh, somebody approached me about establishing a, um, a rider shelter for Buck for, um, it, it's, it's in the Walmart parking lot and it's for the Megabus. So, of course, you know, maybe Megabus's responsibility to build a bus shelter there, but um, he was just pointing out that the Megabus serves a lot of people. A lot of times, if the weather is bad, people are standing out in, in the elements. 
um, how would we go ahead, take, take a step pursuing that, reach out to Megabus and see what they would be interested in doing? Are there any grants we could get? Uh, I think it would be a great service to add to our community. I think it's especially with the with increased use of I was looking at the transportation planner. Um, <laughs> the Megabus and, yeah. and the fact that Pat Township has a lot, a lot of those riders live right in Pat Township. And Do, we, don't, we don't get money from yeah. Megabus though, right? No, we don't, a, yeah, we don't get any revenues from that. So, it, I mean, it, it, I mean, at a minimum, we take Megabus and Walmart working together. Um, if you want the township to get involved, um, that's a discussion for you all. That's a policy issue. Okay. Um, I don't know how far you want to move forward and how much time and effort you want to extend on a, on a single comment. I would like. But, I mean, the I first like, thing. The I first would thing like. would be, you know, we probably need to do a little bit more needs analysis to figure mm -hmm. out, you know, is, is there really a need out there that people are looking for? I can answer that. I'm one of the writers. Um, Patty Stevens from Ferguson is one of the riders. You have a lot of officials that not only our students ride that bus. The mega bus. That mega bus and stand out in the elements. Um, it was Patty Stevens from Ferguson and myself when mega bus stopped the route from State College to Philadelphia that we were the <laughs> only ones that reached out to our, our stakeholders and got that back on. So trust me when I say my first year here, Thanksgiving, they had that parking lot full of buses taking our students across the country. And standing out, not only for myself, I have family members that come up that stand out in that cold or stand in are in our cars waiting. Um, I watch students stand out in the cold and run over to Walmart just to keep warm. It's, yeah. I, I agree with you on that one. I'm, I'm, tell me what I need to do, because I'm now on board with that, with Walmart and Megabus or whoever we need to talk to. Call Megabus and Walmart. Well, yeah. so just as an aside, um, so Megabus leases that space from whoever okay. owns that site. Um, and there was a preliminary land development plan that had come in as a potential different use for that if Megabus would, was giving up their lease. So I'm not sure what those stipulations are. Could you speak a little louder? Yeah, yeah so there was, a, there was a preliminary land development plan that came through for that site that may alter where Megabus drops off and picks up. So before you would move forward with sort of a formal process to look for grant funding to do such a thing, um, I would definitely reach out and have conversations with Megabus to make sure they're gonna renew that lease for the longevity that your investment would, yeah. mm -hmm. so that you, you had some you know cost benefit analysis data behind it. Okay. Um, I don't, I can, get, I can get you information if you want to Leslie, pursue such a thing. I would appreciate that. Okay. Because, like I said, during spring break, during the holidays, our students, and not only students, they have a tendency to think it's only students that ride the megabus, and it's not. So, um, whatever well, you can do, I would appreciate know, Start it. thinking in the orders of $200 a square foot. For okay. Mm -hmm. so how many do. people do you need, and how many square feet does each person need? And Okay. Multiply that by two hundred dollars, and that's probably what it's going to cost to start even to even build. That would be the construction cost. Construction, okay. Somebody better warn Megabras that Dan Rob is going to call. Them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, you know, a, so, a, a bus mean, station. I'll is, help you out, Pam. <laughs> you know, typically the operators provide. Yeah. I don't even think of a but, bus station, but a cover. Um, some well, kind of coverage. It's still going to be expensive. You know, it's good, still going to be a, um, expensive, but yeah. to those that ride it, not only our students, but other residents across our municipalities that come there. Well, you I, know, you know it, I, I don't want to be a downer, but, you know, if Megabus is running pretty full, on most of their routes, they're going to have not a whole lot of incentive for them to spend any money 
because they're full. That, well, I mean, if they were trying to attract people by providing some amenity, they might want to spend dollars, but if they're running fairly full all the time, then they're not going to have a whole lot of incentive for them to do anything more than show up and, and you know, open the door. But right now, it's everyone's trying to get back on track from COVID, and well, you know, just, that's a major... think about what motivates people to do things. Okay, I um, will. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm motivated. Okay. <laughs> you can get a competitor. It's easy to motivate. Sometimes it's easy to be motivated to spend somebody else's money. Yeah, true. Um, <laughs> and you can't tell us about the preliminary uh, Other than that, I think plan. The but it's, okay. it's a start, it's, so... Uh -huh. Uh, Thank you, wait. Lizzie. For no. Are you able to tell us about that? It, it, was, it was not formally submitted. It was just preliminary. So mm -hmm. we have that round. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, it was not formally submitted. It was just a preliminary plan that had come, come across our desks. So if it's formally submitted, you guys will know about it. Um, I don't know what, their, what the plan is. That site is very difficult because of the buffers required against Atherton Street and the way mm. that it's zoned. So putting a building on that little tiny parking lot that's at that yeah. corner, it's it's not an easy task. No, and I'm not even thinking that. I'm just some right. kind of coverage, you know. Yeah. Um, I'll, so I'll come hold an umbrella for you. Thank yeah. you. Okay. I've got a witness to this. Now, when that umbrella, I would come and do that. Yeah, but when that umbrella blows away, where are you going to be? I'm going to take my coat <laughs> off. And put it in. You heard that gentleman-like. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so, are we uh, yeah. moving forward in consensus to prior prioritizing this list? Or, well, Betsy, I'm sorry, go ahead. If, and then I just had one other question. So, uh, regulating um, special events on public property, the, the borough's already done that, it's my understanding. Yeah, they do have some regulations. So, um, and maybe we'll just bring this up again when, when Amy Fargus gets here. But it seems like it's a, a pretty. Um, Your discussions with the other board members. No. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a little confused. Okay, this way. So it does seem like it's would be a, a path with not much resistance. I'm trying to say, the work has been laid out before us. We could take the ordinance that the borough has done and uh, have run it by uh, Betsy Dupuy and manager whoever he or she may be at that time and go ahead with it and get it get it done and just check that off um, okay. yeah. well Betsy's on the line if I'm not mistaken oh, uh, yeah but right she hasn't seen anything oh yeah. all right somebody's gonna have to prepare something yeah okay so can we direct well I will start you know I'll take a look and see if I can get some of these get this started I know you have countdown Whatever, or we'll, we'll remember I'm this. Working up till you know, I'm I'm managing till May. Eighth, and Thank then you. I'm, <laughs> then I'm manager emeritus for five days, and Ooh, okay. then I'm free man. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pam. Yes, Supervisor yeah. McGregor. I'm I'm confused. I thought the stargazing permits were individuals. I, I thought someone talked to us about that, but we realized we're we're not going to do. Well, it's still on the list. It's I'm, I'm just, number four I, at this okay, point. I just thought it should be done already. Yeah, we have Ms. Jim, Jim Payne. Payne. Jim? Has his hand up. I'm I sure see. that's what he wants to talk oh. about. Jim, um, thank you. Yes, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, bring you up to date on my end since the, the work tasks were skipped over for a couple of board meetings. February 12th, I contacted the interim CRPR director and the COG executive director. Mm -hmm. And she came back to me, asked a couple more questions, which I replied to. And on the 16th, she said she would get back to me soon. I haven't heard anything yet. So I'll probably be dropping them another email. Mm -hmm. okay. See where that's going. That's it for me. I just hope you keep looking at it. As I said in my one letter, if nothing else, maybe pass along to Recreation Advisory Committee. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, 
It's still on the list, though. Yeah, keep being a squeaky wheel. Yeah, we, we still have it on the list. Um, thank you, Supervisor Magruder. So what are where our plans um, moving forward on this? Um, well, we'll pick these up. We're currently working on uh, single-use plastics with the borough and Ferguson Township. Um, I'm working on some what we call DEI hiring principles last year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring something forward on that awesome. here in the next, uh, probably at the next meeting. Um, and then we've got a couple other things that we're currently working on. So, Thank um, you. Doug, is there a deadline on this? No, no okay. deadlines on these. These are okay. This is government. Th these are things that the board would like to work on, but we haven't had time to pick up and do much yeah. on these yet. So. Yeah. Thanks for. Okay. It if there. it's okay with the board, we'd like to take a short break. That's a good idea. Thank mm -hmm. you. We'll take a short break. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Next on the agenda is the new national opioid sell settlement. Doug, I think that's you. Yeah, just quickly, uh, back in 2021, there was uh, several attorneys generals. I don't know if it's attorneys general or attorney general. Attorneys general from several states negotiated some settlements for uh, opioid distribution and manufacture. Uh, and they've now you know, concluded uh, negotiation settlements with Teva, Aller Allergen, CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart for a total of $20 billion, of which $17 billion will be uh, used by participating states and subdivisions to remediate and abate impacts of the opioid crisis. Uh, we're not part of any lawsuit involved in this. We are eligible to participate in this settlement as a municipality with a population of more than 10,000. Uh, it's still not clear if we're eligible for any direct funding, but the more municipalities in each state or commonwealth that, that agree to participate, the more money will go to that state or, or commonwealth. Uh, I recommend that the board consider action to designate somebody to be authorized signer to uh, accept the settlement agreement on behalf of the township. Uh, you can designate me or one of the board's supervisors. It's an online process that we have to go through. Okay. Um, can I get a suggestion from the board? I, su uh, I was saying, um, Doug. I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll take I the money. Say the manager <laughs> yep. Yes. Oh. Sorry, you're overrode. Um, I was going to vote sometime, but. <laughs> Ooh, that's fine. Just you motion. sure? No. <laughs> need you to formally oh, take you make a motion. To designate yeah. me. Okay. Um, make a motion that Doug Erickson, township manager. Yeah, just say the manager. All right. The township manager be yeah. the signee, signer. Okay. So Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda is local government week activities for April 10th through the 14th. Director of Finance Larry Pager will provide information. Larry? Yes, yeah, so in um, one of our uh, department head meetings, Alex brought to our attention that April 10th through the 14th is Local Governments Week, and um, we directed some of our, uh, I guess they're Gen Zers, our youngest <laughs> members of our staff, to work on coming up with something that we could do for local government week. So yes, so one of the things they came up with was this uh, this government week activity and coloring book mm -hmm. for the uh, children. This is going to be um, for the full week. Uh, the kids can either download it off, off of our website or they can pick up a copy of it here at the office at the um, front desk, the receptionist desk, and if they return it complete, um, they'll get a little a little prize. They can claim a prize for, for uh, the kids. Okay. Um, the other thing that we're going to do, and that's that's something we're doing for the kids, for more of the adults, we're going to have a um, Instagram photo challenge. Um, which information will be on our website and in our spring newsletter, which should be going on shortly. And that is going to be a scavenger hunt phone cha photo challenge, where you would take a photo of yourself um, uh, having a meal at a restaurant in Patton Township, um, a photo of yourself at one of the parks in Patton Township, and a third photo of a place that you've never been to in Patton Township. And if you um, post all three of those photos with the hashtag Patton Local Government Week, um, we're going to have a chance to win a $100 um, gift card to a Patton Township uh, place of business of your choosing. Ooh, 
Okay. Oh, okay. Nice. On you're Wednesday. Huh? You're out eligible. Yeah, you're not <laughs> We employees what, what was the are not eligible. Um, walk through Wednesday. We will be having a coffee hour and a walk through here at Pat and Township um, at, at the, the municipal building with the department heads from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock on Wednesday, April 12th. Um, you can stop by, we'll have coffee and donuts, and you can ask the department heads questions and tour the building. We're also going to have a virtual tour on Facebook Live at noon. Um, Thursday, so Friday, all every day there'll be different tidbits of information going on on social media that uh, Sophie, our, 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 uh, mar our communication specialist, is taking care of. So that's what we're planning on doing with Go Through Government Week. And we also have asked if the board would consider approving a resolution recognizing local government week. And that's my report. Anybody have any questions? State. Supervisor Reno. Wonderful. That, that's fantastic that the staff uh, got so engaged and had came up with all these wonderful ideas. Uh, I would recommend in terms of publicity, including uh, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, uh, any other you know organization that involves uh, children, uh, because they they're not probably not on our our email blast list, they're, they're not going to hear about it unless a parent of one of them passes on the information to a... a right, a so this will go on in our, our, our newsletter, which is mailed to everybody, so I think it's going to be on the front page um, alongside uh, our, our, our announcement of our new manager and our congratulations and best luck. I understand. Our old manager. But yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, we'll see mentioned. if we can reach out to those uh, groups and and see if they uh, the reason let I them know that this is happening. I got called years ago when I was first became supervisor by the leader of a Cub Scout pack, and they their meeting intention for that particular meeting was to learn about local government. Mm -hmm. So they asked me to come and talk about that right. township and you know, that sort of thing. Uh, they were, you know, these are young boys. Plus there were a few girls in there who uh, weren't members of the pack, but they were <laughs> siblings, so mm -hmm. they were there too. Uh, I found their, in that mostly they were very interested and they asked some quite interesting and insightful questions of me. Uh, Things like, you know, uh, what do you do at your meetings? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what what happens, or, or what what issue are you involved with? And that was when Patent Crossing was first being mm -hmm. proposed, and we're having all those public meetings. They wanted to know how much money we spent. You know, how big is? Well, they didn't say budget, but they mm -hmm. you pay tax. Where does the money come from? Well, Taxes or something. So, th I, I think at, at that young age, uh, they're very curious mm -hmm. about the world, and we should do everything we can to educate them. And also to local schools. Yeah. Yes, that was my um, next. In fact, if you uh, reach out to the principal, they'd probably connect you with the teachers if you could get that directly in their mailbox. That would be awesome. Te you know what? Uh -huh. Teachers love. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Yeah. That would be, that would be great. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, I was going to say that too, and um, that I know we don't want to be printing out. Um, it's a lot no. of resources to print out a lot of this, and so if you can talk to the schools and maybe they can use some of their own resources yeah, and exactly. print some of this out too. But also when we're thinking about collection, um, given that I think you had mentioned people are going to drop these off. Um, I know some children just may not have caregivers who would right. do that or have that, and so that's why the school um, distribution, as well as them being able to collect it and send them back to us, 
um, can be helpful so that we can spread out the, the wealth and the prizes. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, Chief, the, the, we'll no. have to re uh, think about how many prizes we were going to get. So, Great idea. The, the more the merrier, I think. And, Chief. and it's our first year doing something like this, so Wonderful. hopefully we can build on it from year to year. Chief, um, don't you have offices in some of the schools? Yeah, we have a school resource officer primarily in the middle school, but he visits the elementary schools every day. Is so that he, he already has those connections. Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, can we um, probably get some of this information to one of your officers if he's in the school? And Absolutely. Yep. Use that, that resources as well. Yeah. Supervisor Trevino. I bring this to the resolution. I have to point out a typo. Okay. Uh, is the local government week April 10th it, or 14th or May 10th or 14th? It's April 10th or 14th. So the, so the resolution needs to be... Yep, the official uh, version that Pam will sign has the correct date. Yeah, so it's oh, be okay. April. So, Madam Chair, I will... Ms. Alex that. pointed that out to me earlier today. <laughs> okay, so. thank you, Alex. <laughs> sure. Madam Chair, I, I move we approve resolution 2023-009. I second. Uh, second. Um, second. Discuss discussion. Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Where's Any opposed? Any abstention? The resolution is approved. I just want, where Thank is that you. list that you read from, Larry? Uh, it will be. We, we. It will be coming out. You'll start seeing it awesome. on the website. It's okay. going to be in the um, in the newsletter that's going to come on that's being printed right yeah. now, and. It was going to be on social media. So, so it's going to start hitting social media and the website within the next couple of days. So what, one thing I would like, and I can actually do it myself, I guess, if I have time, is <laughs> there's a lot of kids in my neighborhood, and actually a lot of people in my neighborhood. They all know, you know what I do, because they always ask me to <laughs> talk to somebody in that township. I'd love to have a little sign that says, you know, ask me about government week, national government week. Um, Local. Maybe, maybe I'll just make one. And Don't put that in my <laughs> neighborhood. I don't want people asking me. But. <laughs> yeah, I, I could, I'm going to give some to these kids in my neighborhood. That's great. Only you. <laughs> Such a great idea. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And please thank the staff for coming up with this yeah. wonderful this idea. Um, next on the agenda is the Pennsylvania State Association for Township Supervisors, Doug. Yeah. So annually at their national or state conference PSATS uh, goes through a resolutions process this year you know, you got that included with the supplemental distribution that mm -hmm. came out yesterday um, I did review it the only one that I had any uh, opposition to was 23-38 uh, which is way back on page 8 um, and I would move, I would recommend that. You can just pull it in the box over there. Um, why, why, if you Because single yellow line is not a recognized traffic control device. Uh, it should either be a double yellow line or, or a broken yellow line, so. Um, that's the reason. It's, it, it's a throwback to 50 uh, years ago in Pennsylvania when a single yellow line was, was considered, you know, we saved paint by only one line instead of two, like the regulations say. So, so we're uh, Other than that, I didn't have any, I, it seemed like the Resolutions Committee had done a very good job. They had several where they um, offered alternatives to ones that were they, were they opposed those, which I thought was a... Mm -hmm. A new a new practice that they hadn't done in the past. So mm -hmm. They ran out of questions. So the purpose of this is to provide uh, direction to Dan. Okay. Uh, so, and then the other is, the other change that's coming about is a three percent increase in dues that will be voted on by the membership also. And then at your place, I'd also left some additional information about uh, executive board and the rules for. Mm -hmm. uh, doing the resolutions if you've never been there for it it's it's worth the trip yeah thanks for doing that okay i have a do have one question about Boston, 
to what go back to Whitman. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. Just jumping out. Uh, resolution 23-08, um, it's in regards to Pennsylvania prevailing wage law. Um, and it's recommending that piece that seat legislation to uh, amend the law to allow projects where a non-public body is paying the project cost. And I just wondered what the rest of the board thought about that. I'm a strong believer in prevailing wage law. Um, I know it adds cost to uh, the person paying it, but it also supports our working um, citizens. Mm. Well, I, and I know that us taking a stand in PSAC probably doesn't make that much of a difference, but that's something that... I've been your voting rep the last two years. Uh, I will say that those resolutions that we supported or opposed, depending on what it was, uh, I spoke up. To, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't say why, uh, that we mm -hmm. supported it or didn't support whatever it was. I was not the only one on most mm -hmm. of those. There was always a contingent of mm -hmm. speakers that were in line with what our board is, asked me to, to, to represent. But in most cases, we were in the minority mm -hmm. yeah. of the total membership. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, it can be frustrating, but it is a public forum. Mm -hmm. It's recorded, televised. Uh, I mean, you're speaking to mm -hmm. a huge audience, and I think every opportunity, we should take every opportunity uh, to take a express uh, mm -hmm. our, our, our values. Our values. Yeah. So and even if we have to do it year after year after year, I, mm -hmm. I think it's still worthwhile doing it. Mm -hmm. And, and we're not, I can tell you, we're not alone. Yeah. We're not. Mm -hmm. I was not the only person who, who, mm -hmm. who addressed the, uh, the meeting. So uh, I will also ask Madam Chair if the rest of the committee, I know I didn't go through this before this meeting, if you would go through these resolutions yeah. mm -hmm. on your own and then come back mm -hmm. by the next board meeting, April 12th. We will if do there that. are any others, uh, and mm -hmm. we can discuss your request as well. Okay, great. I'll just bring it up there. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on this? All right. Next on the agenda is consent agenda. Doug. Uh, we got one, two, three, four items on the consent agenda. Our poll to ask for a motion to approve as shown. Can I get a motion to approve the so consent moved. agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? When aye. I didn't get a second. Second? Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Moving right along. Next is manager's report. Doug, you're off. Um, under correspondence, I, I provided a letter of support to CADA for a grant application. I don't really recall exactly what it was for, but it was for a good cause. Uh, there's a development update from the zoning officer if you have questions, and then provided the uh, memo I did send on to COG about budget priorities that Dan reviewed with the Finance Committee last week. Uh, Upcoming events, uh, township office schedule were closed on April 7th and May 29th. Uh, PSATS is late next month, household hazardous waste collection, you need to pre-register. You want to take advantage of that. Uh, Ms. Farkas will be starting on May 8th. May 16th is primary election. And as a matter of record, includes the uh, final agreement with the manager. Uh, so we have a transparency on that. Um, I don't know, if, and, and I just, you know, there was an issue with the manager and Dubois that came out on Monday. I don't know if people were aware of that. Uh, -uh. uh it was yeah. indicted for, um, wow, I thought yes. everybody in the world <laughs> got thought that. Yes, one. I remember now. <laughs> got yes. indicted for taking a couple of dollars. Or 600,000 or something like that. Yes, I um, remember that. I just, you know, there, 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 there are managers and then there are professional <laughs> managers. 
Um, Amy Farkas, who you've, re you've hired, I can guarantee you is a professional manager. Mm -hmm. She is, uh, and she lives and 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 she lives she lives the job. She's uh, very active in the national and state organizations for, for management. Uh, the International uh, City County Managers Association (ICMA) has a very strict code of ethics mm -hmm. that uh, we are all obligated to follow. Um, and obviously, you know, it goes beyond you don't take money out of the public coffers. It goes, you know, <laughs> your job is to, you know, look out for the public good. Your job is to, you know, we, we do things like when I get contacted by a, a, an elected member from another municipality, I am obligated to notify the manager of that municipality. And they do that for me. If you reach out to somebody, they're going to they're gonna tell me that, that you contacted. Just, you know, so-and-so contacted me, asked uh -huh. this question, I provided this information. So a lot of times if you do email a manager about a cross-border issue, you might always see the managers are, 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 are uh, CC'd on those things. Um, but there is quite a rigorous code of ethics that applies to managers, and those of us who take it very seriously mm -hmm. abide by that, uh, you know, be non-political. And so, you know, I never get involved in, in any, I don't, can't sign anybody's petition um, up until last year. I never had a yard sign until 2020. <laughs> never had a yard sign in, in our yard. My wife put one up last year, or 2020. Um, but, you know, those types of things, unfortunately, they happen. Um, you know, the, the legal issues will play out in Dubois, but, you know, he, that gentleman was not a member of ICMA. He was not a member of the of the state association. Um, but I would just let you know, everybody around here who works for the municipality and center region, they're all active members in those organizations. They're all dedicated to the profession, uh, and we do it because we think it's a noble a noble undertaking. That sounds corny sometimes, no. but you know that's what motivates me. And, and if I can come up like you know the Gainer Road thing and bring my years of experience together and say, hey, here's another way to look at this issue. What if we do this? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it really does. Make, it's, I think it's going to be a win-win-win. And uh, so, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I want to speak about the profession. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you for your honesty and, and your dedication to um, our constituents and especially to this board. Um, I also wanted to, I don't know whether we had an opportunity to thank um, on the CATA board, uh, Mark Carpet is now the chair. So from Patton Township, we truly say thank you, Mark, as we move forward working with CATA. So, um, is that it on your report, Doug? That's it. Yes. All thank right. You. Next on the agenda is the committee reports. Is there any supervisor that would like to add to the committee report at this time? I didn't. Uh, Su supervisor Torino? Uh, I will say the uh, Parks and Rec Governance Special Committee met this morning, so I have not taken an opportunity to write up a, a report. But we're, I can say, uh, we're making progress because we we had two new members join this year who weren't on last year, so they didn't have the benefit uh, of that of the knowledge of all the discussion that went on last year. But we're we're progressing in an orderly way. We're uh, trying to concentrate on the big picture, you know, the governance issues, not get down into details, but which we got bogged down with last year multiple times. And we're still, uh, Eric uh, Nordenberg, the executive director of Cogus, is still pursuing possibilities of, of trying to identify a, a facilitator for, for our work. And so he gave us a progress report. There's no one has, no one's been approached yet, but he's, he, he did give us a list of uh, uh, what duties and responsibilities of a facil 
of a facilitator would be that they can he can hand to a potential uh, person, mm -hmm. and we all agree with that with what he said. So we're we're doing we're making progress. Great, great. Supervisor Whitman, did you want? Yeah, I, was, I want to say a few words about the Climate Action and Sustainability Report I submitted, and then I'm going to turn it over to my colleague to talk about the Facilities Committee, because there's a big issue coming up there, and um, I didn't take the time to understand it the way I wanted to. So we, ha we have this agreement. Okay, so with the, the Climate Action and uh, Sustainability Report was lengthy this time. Actually, it was at least submitted officially this time, because usually I wait till the last minute. It's long, not that you have to read everything and understand everything, all of the steps that are taken, but so that you see a little bit about how this sausage is being made. It's very difficult going from this abstract set of wish, a wish list, a set of actions that we want mm -hmm. to take, as in just pulling one at random, have a 10%, um, have houses in the center region, have 10% of them have solar power by 2040. So that's a really great goal, and it seems very doable, but the question is, how do you do it? How do you make it happen? Will it just happen automatically? Um, do you put out more information? Do you apply for grants and make those available uh, first come, first serve basis? So um, I wanna just give kudos to what's called the Technical Advisory Committee that is working mostly with Pam Adams um, directly, and they're you know, scientists and planners, professionals from many different fields. And they are trying to put actual items to this. And, and so it, it, it's really a, a mind taxing task and I'm very impressed with it. So they'll, they'll get there by the end of the year, by uh, May or June, I think, which is the end of the calendar year. So, okay. Yeah, so I'm really impressed. Okay, so, um, Facilities and Finance Committee. We had a, a couple of um, conversations, you know, uh, the Facilities Committee, in doing their facility assessments that Lou Brumgard had done over the years, um, they had decided that they would put 2% of the value of the asset away each year for repairs and replacement. Um, that is an industry standard. I would agree with that, that that's an industry standard in my many years of working in an industry. That's what our goal was. Whether you get that goal or not, that's, that's, a, that's another issue. So <clears throat> in order to go to 2% in 2024, we will have to add another 500,000, actually it's $477,000 worth of expense to the Kong budget. That $477,000 of expense would take us from where we currently are, which is 479,000 to 956,000 and it would equate to a 5% increase in the COG municipal contribution budget of where we already talked about, I think, at the last meeting that, you know, we're probably looking at a 7 to 7.5% 7 increase just on maintaining the COG budget to where it is today. Um, so now, you're talking about going to 12 to 12 and a half percent increase in the comp budget and whether that's tenable or not. Um, I made the comment in the facilities committee meeting that as a person that sits and listens to the excitement that goes on in the facilities committee and then turns around within a couple days and gets excited again for the finance committee meeting. I wear two hats. I wear the facility committee hat when I'm in the facility committee and I change that hat to the finance committee when we move there. In the facilities committee, I told them that their job was to recommend 
the industry standard. To say, yes, the standard is best practices 2%, and that's going to equate to another $477,000. That's the job of the facilities committee to make that recommendation. The job of the finance committee is to say, okay, we take the recommendations from human resource, facilities, all the different committees that want increases in their budget, and we have to decide how are we going to take the increase that we can afford and distribute it amongst the thing. And I had a, a rather spirited discussion, I should say, in the, in the finance committee about how I felt about the, the budgeting process and how I felt about how this this amount should be should be handled. So just want everybody, I just want to prepare everybody for when the budgeting season starts that we are going to probably be seeing a, a, an increase coming out of COG that's going to be looking at at this 477. Now the recommendation that I made through through Dan is to rule that go like we are currently at one percent of our asset value. We want to go to two to rule that in over a four or five year period. Go one, then go 1.2, then go 1.4 until we hit two percent because that's too big of a nut for us to crack in one year. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that that was coming down the pike. We're going to see that. Budget season is going to be difficult this year as it is with the, with the inflation pressures that we're having. Plus to add some of these uh, items, it, it, it's going to make it even more difficult. So that's what, uh, that's what I have to say about facilities and finance. Larry, Dan, are we going to at least touch on this during one of our general forum meetings, or are we still in the process of this? This four hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars you're probably not going to see until the general forum. It, it you're not going to see it in the general. Well, they have the general forum this no, no, on oh, Monday. Monday. And no, you probably won't plan. see oh, it, 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 until the program plan comes on. Okay. Yeah, which is going to be what it's June. June. Something like that. July. Somewhere. Edie post Doug. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my daily life here at the, the office. It's after me. I don't. Care. <laughs> well, we thank you for the many hats that you wear and appreciate both you and Dan. Um, being on both the Committee of Finance, I can't even begin to thank you for that. Um, Supervisor my pleasure. Supervisor Magruder? No? Okay. For me, um, our public safety was um, canceled, um, but I was able to attend the EMS legislative breakfast with our chair, Elliot Abrams. And one of the concerns which I will write up on our next report, and once we discuss it, is the concern, the EMS concerns and comments were very concerning to all our communities. Um, as soon as we had, we host the Public Safety Committee for COG, I'll write up my public safety uh, report that will give you the guidelines of issues that came up that we all should be aware of. Um, and for the executive um, committee, I sat in for um, our chair, Elliot Abrams, yesterday, so I will have a report at our next meeting. All right, next on the agenda is other business. Are there any other business? Doug? No, ma'am. All right, seeing none. Um, next on the agenda is adjournment. Move to adjourn. All right, second. and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I want to thank everyone.
This meeting is now adjourned.